Hello and welcome to uh, something with something very interesting and something very much uh, uh, right now, you know, of importance uh, for all those uh, uh, students who are, I mean, going through the process of organic synthesis, they will come across this uh, process of course, if they are, uh, I mean, uh, reacting some compound with some heat source, they are going to come across this method also when they are going to, I mean, heat their, their reaction mixture and uh, keeping that thing in their mind that the solvent level or the solvent uh, that is being used in the reaction mixture, they should not lose that volume of that uh, reaction mixture. So there is a um, great technique that we can, we will be discussing today. Um, and uh, that would, I mean, uh, enable you to have, uh, I mean, great, uh, I mean, you will enable you to, I mean, uh, follow all these uh, important steps which I'm going to share with you right now because uh, a lot of students have asked me uh, about uh, this process that what is this actually what how does this process goes on and what is I mean it's I mean, what is the use of it? So uh, today I thought that I must start this thing before continuing with my other uh, lecture series. I should uh, first discuss and share my views with you people as my students, as my followers who are, I mean, following me on YouTube um, and uh, they are interested in getting knowledge about uh, this method in which they can uh, be left with the volume they have initially taken uh, for their reaction mixture and they are not supposed to lose that volume. So what could be that, uh, I mean, what could be that process? So um, I'm Professor Dr. Moina Akhtar Mughal from Dr. Amikazi Institute of Chemistry, University of St. Jamshiro. And I'm here today to discuss today a very interesting process called refluxing. So what is refluxing? Why it is used? Why do we need to reflux our compounds or our reaction mixture, right? So now when uh, uh, you are processing or you are going, progressing your reaction mixture, you come across a lot of steps. I mean, there are a lot of steps which you, um, which you go through and the reaction mixture, it goes through a lot of transition states to reach, I mean, to, to get you the desired products. So in that whole process, the reaction mixture has got some certain volume. So that volume is supposed to be maintained during the whole reaction time period. But what there is a question that how you're going to maintain that volume in the flasks when still it's been constantly being provided the heat heat source that how you are going to be left with this almost the same volume level which you initially took right so there is a method this is the method called refluxing right uh, and this is a very interesting method and uh, you can easily perform it in your labs in your research labs and um, in all the condensation reactions you are going to employ this method you are going to go through the refluxing process even when you are uh, synthesizing any organic compounds or anything I mean particularly re related to your organic um, uh, organic reactions you will come across this method and this is called refluxing now what are the things that are needed it for uh, refluxing right in the laboratory right in the lab so of course you will be needing a reflux condenser I'm going to show you all these in my slides I prepared two slides for you people but first of all I would like to uh, show you I mean the things that uh, you must uh, learn from uh, directly from I mean from your teacher right from Dr. Moina so I want you to uh, explain a few things to you which uh, will not be uh, I mean possible in the slide here so well the glassware you are going to use it starts of course from a reflux condenser there are a lot of lots of types of reflux condenser you can be using any of the reflux condensers right and then you'll be using you'll be needing a round bottom flask now there are there's a question very interesting question there are many types of flasks round bottom flasks there are I mean basically um, I can tell you today the two types of flasks right so what could be those flasks for that could be used for this reflux process refluxing process these are this is number one is your round bottom flask and number second is your flat bottom flask now what is a round bottom flask and what is a flat bottom flask I will show you in my slide which I'm going to share right so uh, round bottom flask as the name it implies simply that the bottom of the flask is round right it's round and whereas the flat means it, it it's like that it's totally flat 
So what could be the, I mean, uh, reason of these two flasks? So you will come across, when you will go through your organic synthesis, you will come across these, um, you will see these two types of flasks in your uh, um, lab. So the, actually there now, let's talk about the heating sources right now what type of heating sources are available in organic labs. There are uh, open flames. We normally do not use open flames when we are dealing with the volatile solvents, right? So we, of course, need something safer. So we use uh, heating mantles. Heating mantles, number one, and number two, hot plates with a magnetic stirring in them, right? So uh, what happens that when you are using, uh, I mean, now we, are, we were talking about the two flasks, that is the flat bottom flask and the round bottom flask. So now, and on the same time, we are talking about a hot plate and a heating metal. Now a hot plate is has got a flat surface, right? So that the, uh, I mean, if it has got a flat surface, it's round, whereas, and it has got a round disc and that is flat. The hot plate okay so your um, flat bottom flask can i mean slide over it and it can be set on it easily and you can easily heat um, and when you will start the heating i mean heating time period you will start the heating um, the heat will be provided to it from the bottom right and um, equally without being uh, i mean um, getting into any other directions it will directly heat its bottom because it's flat and the surface that is it, it's lying on is also flat right so this is mainly the function of that flat bottom flask whereas the round bottom flask when you are using a heating mantle heating mantle has got um uh, you can say a hollow hollow cup shaped it, it is hollow cup shaped right so when and your um, the round bottom is also uh, you can say it's round so it can directly fix fits into that hollow cup and in that sense it the heat is to equally provided to the flask right from all the sides of that round bottom flask right the round bottom flask is heated from all the sides equally because the, it's it's been cupped inside that hollow um, surface right that is called a heating mantle so um, I will show you what is heating mantle and uh, what is a hot difference between hot plate and heating mantle so somebody can ask you what is the difference between a heating mantle and a uh, hot plate right and uh, what is the main difference between a flat bottom class and round bottom class so after today's lecture listening to this lecture you will come come you will come to know that uh, yes what these were the basic differences right okay now let's get back to the glass sphere that you are going to be needed for the fluxing your compound or any solvent or any progressing with any reaction mixture so you will be needing definitely um round bottom flasks right the condensers right a beaker of course and then a round bottom flask you can use there are a number of lots of sizes of round bottom flask so it depends upon the requirement you and uh, uh, according to your requirement that what type of a reaction and how much amount you are needing at that particular moment so it's depends on you that what size you're going to get okay and uh, just like that there are different sizes of beakers so you can select any beaker you according to your desired requirement right so um, for that uh, um, refluxing especially you'll be needing these two basic things then of course for stirring the i mean uh, reaction mixture you need a magnetic bar inside it either you need if you just need a simple boiling that you you can add boiling chips two to four boiling chips are more than enough you can add boiling chips into your reaction mixture or if you want it to stir along and the reaction is supposed to be I mean uh, progress uh, for a longer period of time so uh, and this refluxing is for the actually with is this process is known just because you can progress this uh, I mean uh, reaction with the longer periods it's it goes on with, with the longer periods this reflexing method so um, it is uh, suggested for actually for the long period heating timings when you have to heat your compound for about 24 hours for 48 hours so you need a reflux condenser so that the solvent level will not lose now how it will not lose that is I'm going to explain it to you right now but first of all I would like to tell you about the things that you are going to be needed you will be needing of course so uh, now as I mentioned in my earlier um, uh, lectures also that uh, when you are heating uh, this um, assemblies the glassware assemblies especially when the I mean 
the condenser is joined um, uh, inserted inside the flasks right so you will be needing um, when the heating and if you do not i mean uh, perform one step that is called greasing your joints right greasing the joints of your glassware it will can seize it they can i mean they can uh, if at, at higher temperatures they will um, they can they it has a chance that they will seize and they will not be i mean uh, separated again and you will not be able to use them again for the same purpose so for that reason you need to grease them right Re grease them equally inside um, and there is uh, there are you know, a number of grease that are available as silicon greases uh, um, uh, recommended sometimes and a w a vacuum grease is uh, recommended sometimes so you just need some sort of a grease to I mean uh, put a layer inside your all the joints of your glassware so that it should avoid them seizing right okay so these are the basic things that you'll be needing and then of course you'll be needing the tubings the rubber tubings are supposed to be there uh, for the water inlet because the, the condenser it the long the condenser is long so it has got a uh, I mean uh, inlet and an outlet water inlet and water outlet and the condenser is basically is of double uh, double there that there are double walled condensers right so the what happens that uh, the, in the in the water that is going from the lower side it will um, uh, it will be surrounding the whole inside of the i mean condenser's jacket right the double walled jacket it is going to um, circulate surrounding uh, that um, uh, the vacuums that i mean that is the 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 space that is inside and that is i mean uh, between the condenser and the sides of the condensers are it has got a double wall so the walls are being circulated by the, this cold water right that will run around that will go inside from the lower lower inlet and it will come outside from the upper inlet in this way it will circulate constantly inside your um, condenser and in this way it will maintain the temperature of your reaction mixture this is what is actually happening here so now uh, in the reflux now what is actually refluxing let's discuss that thing because that is also very important so refluxing is simply a process um, that that simply it will goes on when if you have a reaction mixture right and now you are going to uh, i mean uh, provide heat heat to it you will you have a hot plate or a heating source uh, any any heating source is uh, recommended it depends upon the nature of your re reaction what type of reaction you're going to do it now what happens your you adjusted the whole assembly right now after adjusting the assembly what is actually going going to happen actually the the thing that is going to happen is that that your reaction mixture will you will be knowing the boiling point of your reaction mixture, right? That, that what would be the boiling point of the solvents that are being used to prepare that reaction mixture. So now what happens that it will definitely boil to the that point, that it will hit that point. It will hit the point of that maximum point that at which it boils, right? And then when it starts boiling, right? In the flask, it starts boiling, right? And when it starts boiling, the vapors will, the fumes will go up or the vapors will travel upside into the condenser. They will go up and then uh, as the water inside the condenser, the outer wall of the, of the water of the can, uh, outer jacket, you can call it, or uh, outer wall of the um, condenser is uh, being, I mean, circulated with the cold water. So what happens, these hot fumes that are going, traveling upside, they will condense down and they will cool down and they will drop into the uh, reaction mixture so now the time at which it starts you will see the first drop that uh, flows down into your reaction mixture is the time your refluxing has actually started right so you will record your temperature and, and timings at at that moment right that you're if you are suggested to reflux for 30 minutes then this is the time that when you are going to i mean uh, record your time record your time that yes now it has you saw the drop falling into the reaction mixture and now this is the time your refluxing has started right so the, from now and if it is suggested for 30 minutes that means now from uh, now on for since, till it hits 30 minutes you have to uh, be patient and you have to wait right and the process will continue till it reaches 
I mean, up to half an hour is completed, right? So in this way, uh, I mean, uh, because uh, students have this concept that you ad arrange your assembly, you, I mean, um, you have started the heating, and as you, as they turn on the heating, I mean, switch, they simply uh, feel like that, they, yes, their refluxing has been, the process of refluxing has started, but that is not the thing. The point is that when you saw the first drop that cools down, that condenses down, back to your reaction mixture is the time you are going to note right that yes this is the time your reaction has now started refluxing right so this was something about i mean uh, a slow uh, um, a brief introduction or a brief uh, knowledge about what is actually refluxing it because lots of students are coming and they are asking from me about this refluxing method so i thought that i must today share with you a slide uh, slides uh, so that you can understand easily uh, how you are going to deal with this method right so uh, let me see which slide was that yes this is the slide i think okay okay so uh, this is actually your slide so now here again i'll start with the same thing what is refluxing why do we need refluxing what is refluxing setup so now we have a slide in front of the uh, so now you can match my words with the, I mean, slide settings, right? So now the glassware, we, we are going to need, of course, a beaker. Now these are all my hand drawings. I just made them. So please do apologies if you find them difficult to follow. But I think so. They are not that difficult. You can easily understand those, especially the chemistry students, they know what these all things are all about, okay? Maybe it's not interesting for the others, but it's very much informative for all the chemistry people the world of chemistry, right? Okay, so this is a beaker drawn by Dr. Moina Mughal, and this is a condenser, a double wall condenser. Now here you can simply see, uh, there are two outlets, right? Now here, uh, what are these outlets for? As I just mentioned, this is from here, you will attach a tubing, and here also you will attach another tubing. Now from this tubing, uh, you are going to, I mean, the water will go inside, and from it will go uh, travel up, and it will come out from that. In this sense, it will constantly be circulating inside, um, I mean, uh, surrounding this um, condenser right so between the walls of these condensers a double walled condenser you can see a double walled condenser right and this is simply a round bottom flask now see it's bottom it is it is always called round bottomed flask students always write round bottom b o double t o m but it's not the actual term you have to write down you have to memorize it like round bottomed flask right b o double t o m e d round bottomed flask right Okay, then you'll be needing a magnetic bar. Yes, of course, if you need to, I mean, stir your compound, you need a magnetic bar. It avoids, uh, I mean, uh, the bumping of your solvent, right? It won't let the solvent bump. Okay, now the heating source, if you will talk about the heating source, now here I have uh, two examples. I, um, I am going to explain you this refluxing method with, with the help of very interesting two examples right now this is a example number one now here you can see a hot plate this is a hot plate right and here it has got uh, a heating source right of course uh, uh, i immersed it inside a uh, inside oil now you can um, use oil for i mean higher temperatures because oil has got uh, a higher temperature so for, uh, for so if you need above uh, i mean 400 to 500 degrees celsius temperature you can use a oil bath and you can immerse your flask inside it and you can but yes refluxing can be done without this oil bath you can directly put your flask on this um, hot plate and you can start the reflexing process okay fine so this is an oil bath this is was an option for those who will see this figure somewhere and they will not follow then what is this oil bath so it's for higher temperatures okay now Okay, if you add, uh, there's an example. Now this is a reflux condenser, fine. And here, this is a round bottom flask. Okay, now there is some solvent. If suppose you add 10 ml solvent into this flask, right? And you started um, heating this, I mean, uh, you refluxing, I mean, you start the refluxing heating, uh, heating period. Now what happens? 
when the first drop i just wrote it when the first drop of the solvent drops back condenses condenses and drops back to the boiling bubbling solvent right here so this is the time that when you will know down the time that this is your refluxing time fine okay <clears throat> now this process will continue you can continue it for the period of i mean your desired timings that you can it depends on the reaction and its nature and what you are actually synthesizing what you are actually doing so it just depends on that so uh, for 30 minutes if you need to uh, heat your compound uh, this 10 ml solution after 30 minutes when uh, this you will take out will you stop the refluxing because there's constantly what will happen the vapors will go up and they will uh, come down they will condense and they will cool down and they will drop back into your flask and this is the method called refluxing so now in that sense your solvent level that was taken initially 10 ml will remain almost the same okay it will not uh, it will not be reduced right because the, it's all closed and it is condensed and it is dropping back to your flask your solvent is dropping back down to your reaction mixture so the the volume you took initially was never lost fine okay whereas if you take a hot plate again on the other side you um, i'm just comparing it right and there is a beaker it has got a 10 ml solvent now what is happening it's a hot, same hot plate same hot plate as this one as this one right now you where if you same procedure is applied here now what will happen uh, that this you can see the solvent level it's same the 10 ml 10 ml which we used in the round bottom flask and now 10 ml we are using in an open container that is a beaker now what will happen after 20 minutes or after 30 minutes the volume will never remain the same here i've written also after 20 minutes or 30 minutes whatever the desired timings you have said, uh, you have set down uh, the volume will never be the same as the solvent will boil and evaporates and you will i mean uh, will the vapors will escape and volume will be reduced right so there is a chance of escaping right the volumes will volume will no more be the same as initially you you took the volume will be reduced right it depends how much so this method is basically used when you are told to reduce the volume of your solvent so we can we always use an open container an open beaker or some surface some some glassware any glassware that is uh, that is uh, uh, I mean, open from the upper side, and it is broad, right? And uh, it's, it should not have a narrow neck, so that so that it uh, it will not have any problem in escaping the I mean uh, the the solvent. So if you need to reduce it, but when you are supposed to reflux it, you can see the difference. Your solvent is totally, I mean, saved. It's uh, uh, on the whole of your solvent level. It remains the same. You will not um, lose your solvent. Whereas here, you are going to definitely lose your solvent uh, it, and the initial volume you took. It will never remain the same so this is the basic difference between an ordinary i mean heating and the refluxation right somebody says that why you can also do it while taking it in a beaker why you need a reflux condenser why you need this round bottom flask or any flask so i mean why you have to fit on that condenser i mean you definitely you'll need a um, you can fit a condenser over a flask you cannot fit a condenser over a beaker okay so you need a flask that can hold a condenser right so this is what is happening here that the open vessel or open glassware the chances of the solvent to escape are more right are hundred percent they will escape especially the volatile solvents the volatile molecules they will escape right whereas the, the non-volatile they will remain inside so we don't want that we want to keep our solvent level the same so for that we do need to to reflux our compound right and there is one more thing also which is uh, not that much common and i've not seen uh, i'm not uh, heard anywhere before that yes the odor right the smell it also reduces when you are doing the refluxing right whereas where when you're uh, uh, doing this method and uh, the vapors are constantly escaping and you if it's something some sort of an irritating or a pungent solvent you are going to inhale it and definitely you will uh, you'll you will you will harm yourself or the others who are surrounding you they will be they will be i mean um they will won't be comfortable with this environment so this also prevents the smell the odor the pungentness the bitterness or whatever uh, solvent you are using i mean what, what because organic solvent mostly they are not that much you know pleasant um, except for alcohols 
and few others. Okay, so let's get back to our, so now in this slide, you have basically seen, uh, I mean, the whole glassware that is that can be used and the difference between um, heating a, a solvent or a reaction mixture in an open beaker and of course, refluxing your or heating your reaction mixture in a round bottom flask with a condenser over it. So now you can, you have the confidence to, I mean, share your uh, experience with anybody that yes, you can tell them that what is refluxing? What is the difference between a reflux uh, a round bottom flask that has got a reflux condenser over it? And what is the difference between when you are going to heat your solvent, the same solvent you are taking in the round bottom flask, you are heating in the round bottom flask, you took in the, uh, in the beaker and you started the heating process so you will lose your solvent simply the solvent level will not remain the same right and so this is the basic difference fine okay okay now uh, here i would like to uh, put some more information into your knowledge because uh, when we are discussing refluxing so you should see the refluxing i mean uh, refluxing setup okay but first of all you should know the difference between rbm and fbm now what is rbm what is fbm as i just mentioned in the beginning of my lecture right it was just the beginning that i told you that there are a number of flasks right but if we talk about the round bottom flask yes this is a round bottom flask and this is a flat bottom flask. You can see here, this is totally flat, whereas this one, it's totally round, right? So that, these are the two basic shapes which I needed to you to know because uh, again, these are my beautiful uh, beautiful drawings, right? And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm not that good in drawing. Once I was very good in drawing, but now when I become a chemist, I'm no more, no more good in drawings. So, um, and I had a beautiful handwriting also. I was known for my beautiful handwriting when I joined uh, Dr. Amikazi Institute of Chemistry and I used to write down all the things on the board. So it was left there and the teachers, they were, whoever come after me, they used to read and they used to say, whose writing is this? It's somebody new, right? So I had a beautiful handwriting and it's all credit goes to the convent from where I, I was given the initial education, right? So. Okay, so let's get back. Again, I was distracted. This is Dr. Moina's main problem. She's always distracted by different things which are not that useful, which are totally, I mean, uh, waste of time. So I'm, I'm like that. Okay, get back to your work with Dr. Moina. Okay, so now this is the refluxing setup here. Here you can see a few more things which I never told you. Of course, a stand, an iron stand is needed. This is an iron stand and here are clamps, right? Now your reflux condenser, before starting the refluxing and before starting this heating process, you need to fix your um, assembly uh, properly with the clamps, right? Because the clamps are uh, going to hold your condenser from the upper here, from this, side and from this side there are two clamps basically that are required here right so um, in that sense your assembly will not move right during the heating process because the stirring is going on there should be a there would be a little bit the movement so the movement would not disturb your assembly and this and, and should it will not never fell down otherwise it, it can it has the chance to I mean, uh, fell easily, okay? So uh, you need to clamp your setup before you will ever start your any type of a reaction. You need an iron stand and it has to be your, uh, whatever assembly you are using, it is supposed to be clamped, right? And there is one more thing, uh, there is a support jacket, uh, jack also, support jack is also under the heating source and that support jack, it moves like that and that like like that and that what is that support jack it is uh, actually i mentioned it earlier also that it is actually for providing more heat when you want your compound i mean uh, your uh, reaction mixture to be closer to your um, uh, to, uh, to your that heating source you will raise the the jack and when uh, you don't want to i mean have to, to um, uh, provide that much heat, you will lower down the jack, it will come down, the heating metal or heating source will come down, it will lower down and your uh, reaction flask, whatever you are using or whatever reaction mixture you are using, it will cool off 
with the time period, right? So actually that jack is only for uh, pulling up and down, right? Your uh, heating source, whatever you are you, uh, using at that moment. Okay, so if somebody asks you, what is a, a jack? Okay, so, or, um, uh, this, and, uh, um, so you should be able to answer, what is a supporting jack, okay? So now here again, I showed uh, the refluxing setup. Now this is a hot plate. Hot plate has got um, two nozzles here. One is for stirring. It maintains the speed of the stirring, right? There are speed numbers are written over the speed in this bar and you can uh, adjust the speed of your stirring according to your reaction. But for longer periods, you need to stir. So you will uh, uh, set up the speed accordingly. Whereas if you need, want for a shorter time, you will uh, Accordingly, you can set up. And the other nozzle is for heating up, right? The temperature ranges are written there, so you can heat up accordingly. That around 70 degrees Celsius, you have to um, heat it up, your, your reaction mixture, whether you need more heating. So these two, basically these two are, are for that, I mean, right? And then you have the this round bottom flask. And then you, of course, it is, um, your, you can see this reflux condenser, a double walled, uh, reflux condenser or you can say this is the outer wall this is the inner wall and uh, water running inside the walls of the condenser now here that that is the outer sides or the walls of the condenser you can see here that the water is constantly running or surrounding the hot fumes that are emerging from this reaction mixture and they are constantly i mean moving up right traveling up and they are cooling down because of the cool surroundings they are going to get from the I mean uh, this water jacket right so it will simply condense down and it will I mean get back to your reaction mixture so this is the basic principle of refluxing and this is the basic refluxing setup and um, this is I think uh, I, this was something very interesting today. I hope you will like this and you will uh, you have understood all the points uh, uh, of this uh, refluxing. As, okay, one more thing that, which I wanted to tell you. Here you can see the levels, right? Uh, the flat bottom flask, I've abbreviated it FBM and uh, round bottom as RBM. Now here you can see, I have, uh, this is marked them with some levels. So keep this thing in your mind that this level of your solvent or your reaction mixture should always be under under half filled, okay? That should be under half filled because the, the solvent or the reaction you are progressing with, uh, it, sh it, it should not, I mean, it can expand, right? and it can disturb the assembly, it can bubble up or something like that. So you should not never want all that thing to happen. So it's just because of uh, that, that you need to uh, fill your, uh, these uh, flasks under half filled, okay? Not fully filled. So um, I uh, am, I think um, I am quite successful today in explaining you all the points which I just wrote it down. I will just see that if something is not, I mean, a left. Uh, yes, it's almost all done. So I wrote down all the points of refluxing so that I can explain it to my students who are going through the process of refluxing because um, uh, this is uh, something uh, students do ask multiple times from me that what is ma'am refluxing? Please explain us what is refluxing and why do we need refluxing? So today you got your answers that what is refluxing and why do we need to reflux our compound? Why not an open container? Why not an open beaker is, uh, is there? And you can easily, I mean, uh, reflux your compound with the help of a beaker that has got, a, I mean, a wider, um, uh, wider area, I mean, wider space. So you, why? that is avoided for and why refluxing is done with a I mean closed to vessel that is the round bottom or a flat bottom flasks and why a condenser is is I mean um, there what is the function of the condenser now you know the con functions of the condenser also keep the memorize these things and remember these things that why um, what are the function of the condenser right so I just explained you each and every step uh, so that you can, I mean, memorize them and you can put them in your mind and uh, uh, and you will be able to explain easily for your, in your exams. And uh, because the process of refluxing, you know, it 
uh, you have to, I mean, do it. You have to come across this process when you are in your uh, master's level, your graduate level, or whether you are in your uh, MPhil levels or you are in, uh, enrolled in your PhDs, this refluxing is a must and everyone should know what is refluxing. So today, I think that I'm quite successful in explaining you what is what is refluxing and how you can reflux your compound and what are the glassware that are supposed to be needed and you are supposed to, I mean, use, as I mentioned earlier, also you have to use, whenever you are doing any type of an organic reaction, you need to wash your um, glassware properly and you need to rinse your uh, glassware and then you have to dry it in the oven for the, some more some time so that it should be, I mean, properly dried and then, um, of course, your glassware is ready for any type of a reaction, for any I mean, reaction you can proceed with when your equipment is ready, when your glassware is ready. And then of course, now you today you knew, know much more now that yes, uh, how this process goes on and um, uh, why, why, what, why we use this, I mean, technique called refluxing, right? And somebody can ask you and now you are today, you are able to answer that yes, this is this is how it goes on. This is the assembly setup. How you're going to set up an assembly. This is this also I have shown you how you how you can set up the assembly and uh, how you are going to clamp your. I mean you have to clamp all your uh, this um, these uh, uh, this assembly when you are um, uh, before starting your reaction time period. You have to um, uh, clamp properly your assembly so that your uh, I mean these. Uh, uh, your assembly should not be disturbed, right? It sh and because you are using the glassware, so you have to keep all these uh, things in your mind. You have to take care of of all these things, and you have to keep all these things. You know, you have to adopt all these precautions because. Uh, uh, it's organic synthesis is never easy. It's difficult. So when you are achieving something, you're about to get something. I mean, you have to be very careful, right? And this refluxing is uh, a very common method. And uh, uh, you have to, I mean, every research chemist, chemist has to uh, come across, will come across this refluxing method. So I hope today you like this video. You will enjoy, you will like this video and you will learn a lot and you will share with your friends and you will, uh, of course, uh, learn it properly now by comparing my lecture with your knowledge about refluxing because uh, uh, when you will compare both the things, you will easily follow the, this great method right so hats off to the all those scientists who have developed such great uh, techniques for uh, to I mean um, uh, to avoid the things which we never wanted okay so thank you very much I will inshallah and hopefully will come again to you people with something new with something more uh, knowledgeable for you and for and and I will uh, select the topic which uh, uh, will be more, I mean, uh, entertaining and interesting for you because and which can uh, make you, I mean, uh, uh, the candidate who is interested in listening to my uh, lectures, right? And because, uh, and you will be focused because you have to be focused on the lecture when you are uh, learning something. So I hope this lecture would help you. Uh, in every way. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.